Jill from June Taylor with another innovative solution. Did you ever want to join your quilt blocks that have made quilt as you go? Now we have a perfect way to do that with our sash in a dash. It's pre-sewn sashing. It's sold by the yard in seven colors with matching binding. Open the casing and nest your quilt block inside the casing. And then we're just gonna run a top stitch down the edge. Take your next block, open the casing, and just do the same thing. To join rows, we're gonna do the same thing, only we're gonna run our sash and a dash across the row. You can run a beautiful embroidery stitch down here to embellish sash and a dash, or you can even put a strip of fabric down here. Here's an example where we added a fabric strip by folding under raw edges and top stitching over sash and a dash. And if you like to make t-shirt quilts, go ahead and quilt your blocks and then join them with sash and a dash. Are you looking for the perfect applique shape to add a cuddly touch of whimsy to your projects? Look no further than the Go Kitten die. This charming die is on a five by 10 die board that will work with any Go fabric cutter and cuts all the pieces to construct litters of kittens in just minutes. You'll get perfectly cut shapes each and every time that would be difficult to do with scissors. Use this die to cut adorable kittens from cotton wool, felt, craft foam, or even minky. The Go Kitten will add just the right touch of dozens of projects, like pillows, wall hangings, quilts, and even placemats for your own furry friends. Take your kittens to the next level by using the free downloadable machine embroidery or finish them with decorative stitches. 
the Go Kitten Die is sure to fluff up your creativity, helping you make project after project that are something to meow about. Because at AccuQuote, we help you cut time so you can quote more. Transforming your t-shirts into a quilt full of memories is as easy as one, two, three. Which memories will you choose to cherish forever? Cut your own shirts or let us cut them for you. A lifetime of memories is now the memory of a lifetime.
Quilters, today's show is all about the Go Simply Cubed quilt for this AQS Accu Quilt Along. Stay tuned and see what we're up to today. I'm Pam Hiller, AccuQuilts Cutting Expert. And I'm Erica Botker, AccuQuilts Creativity Expert. All right, welcome to part one da -da -da -da. of the Go Simply Cubed AQS and AccuQuilts Along. Today, we're going to show you how to cut your fabric and keep track of your pieces. Yes. Both of things are crucial. Both are. Plus, we'll have live question and answer all throughout the show. The team will send us the questions that you need answered, and we will do our best to answer them for all you. All right. Yeah, that's true. So be sure to ask questions uh, that you have in the comments section from wherever you stream our show. Right. And our team are going to send them to Erica. She has her laptop. And I'm right here. All right. So let's jump in. This is my block one. Okay. And you've got your block one, right? I do right? have my block one. Here we go. So, and then I've got, here, leave that up. And here's my block two. Look at that. I do not have a block two sewn. You don't have a block two sewn yet? Uh -huh. It's okay. I just jumped ahead. You know, I got to write these blogs and stuff. All right. So I'm going to hold my block up and talk okay. about it for just a second. Yes. All right, quilters, it's really important to note that typically cube blocks are based on a four patch system or a two by two grid. So that would be just two, two. Yep. But this block uses a nine patch or a three by three grid. Do you want to show them? Three. Three. There we go. So we're using the 10 inch cube. My block is going to finish to 15 inches. Because shape number one in your 10 inch cube is going to finish to five inches. Right. There we go. Right. So let's talk a minute about the pattern. So first of all, you can cut all of the shapes using just one cube. Yes. A little confusion because there is an alternate cube pattern out there the in the instructions and it talks about the five inch cube right well if you didn't have the 10 inch you wanted to make the 15 inch box right. but you had the five inch there are a couple of the shapes that are in there that you could use but basically speaking the pattern now is going to show you if you went today to download it it's going to show you all the shape pieces from one cube and they're all going to be like I said, from the 10 inch, which is what we're making. But remember, the shapes in every cube are the same. They're they just different sizes. So right. that means you could make this from any size. You could make it with your four inch if you, you wanted could. to. So think about this. So if you're using your eight inch cube, you're right. now gonna have a 12 inch block. Yes. If you're gonna use your five inch cube, you're gonna have a seven and a half inch block. There you go. If you're using your six inch cube, nine inch block. So yes. you can use whatever cube you want, but the pattern and instructions are written for the 10 inch cube, which is what Eric and I are using because sometimes we grow rogue, but not today. But not today. Although I am tempted to take my scraps and make a four inch version. <laughs> go for it. Okay, so before we start uh, looking at our cubes and cu cutting our pieces, let's talk about it. So I'm gonna come back here. Okay because there are two distinct blocks. So first of all, we have to give props to Anita Amador. She is the writer of this pattern. Yes. And she is the one who created our project today. She is one of our educators and she works for our team and she's fabulous. Yes. Okay, so here's a sample of one of the blocks. So that's block one in block your pattern. One. Right, so when we talk about block one, this is it. And Erica, this is such a lovely color. I'm surprised you didn't go with this color. I, you know, I was really tempted, but I will talk about the fabric in a minute. I'll okay. tell you why. Okay. And then here is block two. Some of you are already nervous because you see this little shape down here in the corner. There are no Y seams. We used half square triangles on either side of shape number two. So this is shape number five shape number two, so there is no Y seams. We got you covered. We got you covered. So remember, there are two distinct blocks. So you need one, two, three, four of shape number, or block number one, and five of the other. 
that right? That's right. <laughs> okay, look at us do math. Oh, that on is the right. Fly. That is right. That is correct. All right, so Erica, um, we're going to answer any questions. Do yep, we have I don't questions? see any questions yet, so we can just keep boldly charging ahead. Okay, let us know in the comments section wherever you stream our show. All right, so as we know. mentioned, you can mention, you know, you go ahead, ask your questions. We've had plenty of questions, you know, asked through the Facebook group, but go ahead and ask, and we're here to answer for you. So I want to talk about picking out your fabric, right? Just a second here. Okay. Or we talked about that, it in a minute. But oh, okay, talk, never talk mind. We're now. talking about it in a minute. Talk about it now. We're talking about it in a minute. Okay. We'll talk about it in a minute. But here's the block and we're gonna cut. So I want Erica to show you. I'm gonna hold it here. So um, this uses um, up here in the corner that is shape six, square in a square. Or square on point. Right. And then on all four sides to make it into a square the same size as shape one, we've got shape number five, the small half square triangles. Right. The center block is shape number one. And right there, Erica, what is that? quarter square triangles and yes. this is four quarter square triangles sewn together and you know quarter square triangles sometimes masquerade as half square oh, triangles yeah, sometimes but there's square. really a difference and we'll show you when we're laying it out and cutting it we'll talk about that a little bit more and keep in mind you're cutting two of the pink and two of the gold mm -hmm. for the centers okay yes. so we have pulled our dies we have out of our 10 inch cube out of our 10 inch cube and kind of here's so i'm gonna let you do you want to yes cut some of those I'm, six i'd and love five. to i'd do love six to and five. six and five and i'll do one and four okay <laughs> okay so okay. here's kind of how is two this is, is six there you go all right so in the 10 inch cube you can you need your go or your go big fabric cutter because this 10 inch block or die will only fit through the go and the go big. Yes. Okay. And this is the quarter square triangle. And what I did was I already sub cut my fabric. So I measured from here to here, added a quarter of an inch on either side and just rough cut with the fabric. And I tried to keep my fabrics together. For example, in block number one, these are the two colors that I need for shape number four. Yes. And then here is shape number one, and it just needs one. So I did the yes. exact same thing. Yes. All right. So do you want to talk about your fabric that you're going to so cut? So we've got a couple of questions. We're going we're oh. to answer okay. these real quick. So uh, Patty Z said, no matter what size die you use, wait, where did it go? Come back. Um, you still need same number of cuts which would be yes. correct. So whether you're using the 10 inch or the eight inch, unless you decide to add more blocks. Unless you want it to be bigger. You'd need to cut the same number of mm -hmm. pieces. That's a good question. And so, and did you talk about how to figure out how wide your strip was? Yeah, we just did. Okay. So then Alice wanted to know, can I do this with dies I already have that did not come with a cube, but were bought separately? You know, that is a great question and you absolutely can. All of our dies, that's one of the reasons why all of the dies come with the cut and finish sizes on the sides. So it's really important to see that and that way you can figure out if it was in a cube, there, get the glare off of it, um, which cube it would be. But yeah. absolutely, that's why we, we have that information on there so you can use the individual dies. And now, your individual dies, you'll need to prep your fabric differently because there yes. may be more shapes on your die or it might be laid out differently. So be sure you make note of that. And AQS is gonna give you the pattern instructions to rotary cut. Okay, yes. Now, is it better to have four or more different material patterns? Well, you're gonna want four. And For one sure. is a focus. One is your focus fabric. And this is what I picked first. Did you pick yours this first? This is my focus fabric first, yes. And then I just built off of that. So this is what you'll see. Um, my light kind of tealy color is the white in the pattern behind us. And you see, you've gone with a color background too, but we've yep. just built off of this. Yeah, this is kind of a light green, mm -hmm. like a mossy green. Okay. So. 
Let's see, bottom corner of block two, is the bottom corner of block two backwards? No, it isn't. And you'll see that when we, you put it all together. You don't think it is, but. Oh, I see what you're asking. Yeah. I yeah. see what you're asking. Yeah. Okay. Um, quarter inch on all sides, yes. yes, when you're calculating how to prep your fabric. And how big will a block be if using a 12 inch cube? So shape number one, you always want to go back to shape number one. So shape number one in a 12 inch cube is what, Pam? 18 inches, oh, six inches. Finish. Six inches. So since we've got three across. I didn't think about that. Pam jumped to math. I did. And three across of six inches is gonna be 18. So right. with the 12, it's gonna finish to 18. So quilters, if you're using your 12 inch cube, you kinda wanna do some math on your fabric. Yes. And we don't know what those requirements are gonna be, but just do a little math. Just a little. Just a little, okay. I'm gonna mark these off that we, is there a coloring page for the quilt? Not for the quilt, no, no but, but we'll talk about Go Quilt. We're gonna talk about Go Quilt because it is in Go Quilt and you can use that. Yep. Okay, um, okay, I think we All can right. keep so let, moving. So I'm gonna cut my pieces here and Erica's gonna lay her fabric there and can I have a 10 by 10 inch mat? Why, yes ma'am, you may. The mat makes the magic, you know. It does. Okay. And for those of you who are watching who didn't watch last week, we now have a go big die catcher. So oh. Let's talk about it. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. It's right here. It's a portable, you can take it on and off, shelf for the go big. Now I have to stand here and put it back. Um, and it has, oh, well, here, let's do the whole thing here. So you can open it up. Inside is storage, you can put your uh, cord in there, your power cord. And people say, well, why does it come off? Well, it comes off so you can move your machine. You can put it and take it and fold it up. So you can go to the AccuQuilt website, and if you search for the Go Big Die Catcher, it should be on the front of our page. You can get learn more about it, and you can uh, get an email to pre-order it. Yes. And do we know what the price is? Because somebody's going to ask. Somebody is going to ask. I think that the, the um, gosh, I want to say $149.99. Okay. If that is not right, somebody's going to let Someone me know will on tell our us. team. Okay, so now I'm going to cut quarter square triangles. I can always cut six layers at a time, but I'm going to put my two fabrics together and just kind of uh, cut them together. Okay. All right. And the reason I wanted to do this is so that you can all see, see this little tail. Don't worry about the tail. It's only going to cut where there's fabric and a mat. There are no blades inside the cutter. And now I don't have to wait for it. Look. Okay. Um, Brock, am I okay to take my fabric off here? Okay. Okay, so now I have quarter inch or quarter square triangles. Okay. I'm gonna just make a stack of them because we're gonna talk about how to organize them. I'm gonna do the same thing right here. This way I'm not wasting any fabric, which is there you go. Important. Okay. some love get rid of that static pretty soon Erica we get to have the air conditioning on in the dream studio yes, she made it she made an announcement to that effect <laughs> earlier it, it's getting a little warm in here under the lights it's okay in the winter okay I'm gonna do one more and then I'm gonna talk about um, while this is going through this is one of the great things about the go big is as it's going through the cutter I can prep my other fabric Oh, it's okay. Go. Oh, let's see. Well, I need additional dies other than my cube. You know, the only other additional dies you're going to need are going to be for your, would be for your border and your binding. Right. Um, Give it Kathy some S. says, what is the fabric line that I'm using? So, let me tell you. I have several. Um, but the floral here is a vintage floral from... Oh, here, I've got it right over here. I don't have to guess. 
and it has a lovely selvage. It's Vintage Floral by Kimberbell. Now I only need four of these, so I'm only gonna cut four. Oh, I'm gonna turn it back on, there we go. Vintage Flora by Kimberbell okay. is my, my focus fabric. If you wanted to know the others, let me know. Okay. Um, the die catcher, does, does the die catcher hook onto the go big or does it sit at the end? It hooks on. Kind of both. Um, it has magnet. an edge that fits underneath of it so that it holds it nice and straight. And it has Greg, a magnet. Here, she's gonna show you. So see this little lip right here? It just slides right underneath and then it just hooks right next to it. It's very light. Mm -hmm. Oh, show them how it does tricks. It does tricks. I told, I already did. Oh, that. did you? Okay. Do you not listen? I was mom? busy. I'm multitasking <laughs> over here. Okay. okay. And Debbie S. says, yesterday you ladies were talking about coming to Springfield, Missouri. When and where are you going to be? Well, as it happens, we are hitting the dusty trail right after the show. And we will be in Springfield, Missouri on Saturday. Saturday. No. Yes. Saturday. Saturday. We will be at Quilt Sampler in Springfield, Springfield. on Friday. Oh, wait, Springfield, 11 to 2. Yes. 11 to 2. Or 11 to 3. Or sure. No, 10 to 1, 11 to 3. I don't know. We're there at 11. Come, stay, we'll have fun. Then, going backwards, Friday we're going to be in St. Louis at Jackman's. And tomorrow we're going to be in Columbia, Missouri at Apple Tree. Okay, so while you were doing that, and I was doing this and this... I set out to lay fabric on shape six okay. and shape five. So I'm going to cut these. Put Are you going to cut them at the, the same time? Uh, yeah, I was thinking about it. Go for it. Okay. So while I'm doing that, does it hook on securely enough to let it hang over the edge of the table? I don't know that I would want it to hang over the edge of the table. Um, yeah, you kind of want it on I a, think you want all of it on your table. Well, because what's going to happen if you use a 10 by 24 die, it's going to go through and there's still going to be a little there's bit of There's still going to be die, yes. So, okay, so let me start this little die race. Oh, <laughs> it didn't like it. Okay, I got my fabric out of, out of whack. All right, I'll start one first. Um, let's see, we had another. With the 8-inch cube, okay. If you downloaded your pattern earlier, you might have seen it calling for shape three. That was incorrect. Where that confusion came from is that shape three in your five inch cube is gonna be the same as shape five in your 10 inch cube. That's why you don't need it. That's why, yes. So I've cut my square on points. This is what I had left that I needed. Okay. And someplace here, I have the bag that says six. There you go. And I'm gonna put those in. Okay. So we're gonna cut a few more pieces here and then we're gonna talk about storage. Can you go back? Thank you. Pam, we've got a question here and it's a really good one to address. This is uh, Joan V, and she wants to know which way does bias go on the die? Can you oh, talk about you that? You betcha, you betcha. So I purposely cut with the fabric strips here. Okay, so look right here. This is the salvage edge, okay? This is the lengthwise grain, nice and tight, listen. This is the bias edge, look. Lots of stretch and low and long stretch. Yes. So when I lay fabric on a die, I want the lengthwise grain to be parallel to this lengthwise blade, okay? And as it goes through the cutter, then it's gonna cut on that tight edge. If you have it going through the cutter on the bias edge, look at how much stretch is gonna happen. So as it goes through, it's gonna cut the fabric, it's gonna stretch, it's gonna cut the fabric and it's gonna come back and it's not gonna be the right size. 
So that's a great question. It is. So parallel to the salvage edge, and that's why I kind of, when I do this, this was a great project to like subcut your fabric with the fabric. Okay. okay. And here you can see, because I did that on mine, I had a thread there, that this stretchy is on the bias edge. Yes. Just like it should be. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, so Erica, while you're, are you done cutting half square triangles for a minute? I can be. Okay. So let's talk about how we're going to store our fabric. Okay. Um, I am a good user of zippy bags. And what As I, am I did was I created the shapes that are gonna be sewn together. So this says shape number four, block one, okay? Shape <laughs> number four, all these are gonna be sewn together. Yes. All right, and then I have um, shape number, shapes five and six, because these are going to be sewn together as well. Yes. So I feel like for me, it was easier to say, okay, all of these pieces are gonna be sewn together. Now it's interesting because shape number five, you're gonna cut a whole bunch of shape number fives. So just yes. cut a whole bunch of shape number fives because in your second block, you're gonna find that you're sewing shape number fives together so you don't have to have Y seams. Yes. So you're gonna be okay. using those a lot. And we always say that shape number five is our workhorse, right? It is, it is. And when I was cutting, you can kind of see how I subcut my fabric. And then I just laid it out so that I would know, like here's block five and six for block number mm -hmm. two, and here's shape number two for block two. And so I kind of know where my pieces are gonna be. That's a great, great question. Okay. Um, somebody, what are you doing? Well, they wanted to know, I'm going to put some more half square triangles through the cutter here because I need a lots of shape fives. And then I'm going to tell people the rest of my fabric lines. So oh, okay. this was, um, this one is a Maywood. Maywood it is, Studios. Maywood Studios. It is called Vintage Flora and is by Kimber Bell. Oh, we do love our folks at Kimber Bell. We do. Uh, this one. I'm gonna open up the salvages here. Here, I'll, I'll move over here. This one is uh, Moda Fabric. And shoot, I didn't write down what it was. Speckled, this is Speckled by Moda Fabric. And the number over here is 1660. And I love it because the salvages, some of us like our salvages. This one says, life is art, live yours in color. Oh, oh that's that. cute. Isn't that cute? This one is a P&B, uh, P&B Whimsy by Heather Dutton. And I know this print came in other colors too. It's this great print. This one I had to go look at because it didn't have anything and I can't remember now, but it's in the blog. And then this one, which is for my outer border, is, uh, Moda, and it is Thatched by Robin and Pickens. Thatched is a great blender. Uh, Robin and Pickens, this is for Moda. This is the navy blue. I've got a couple shades of it in red for a project coming up. Great, great blender. Um, so what I've done for mine is pick that, that bright floral and then just built off of that with what I would call blender fabrics. So a perfect pattern, the, a perfect way to figure this all out is using Go Quilt, and that is our free design tool that's available for you at AccuQuilt.com. And that allows you to go in and change up the colors in thousands of patterns, including this one, and see how it's going to look. But it's even better because you can actually, boy, I need a new mat for this one. Um, you can actually take pictures of your fabric and upload that in it and see exactly how it's gonna look with those pictures of the fabric, which is really super cool. All right, so here's an, um, I'm gonna talk about my fabric in just a second, but I've cut a whole bunch of shape number twos, okay, for that second block. 
And I'm just going to put in the fabric that I've already pre-cut because then if I need to cut more, I didn't really do the math on how many I needed to cut because we're talking on the show. So I'm just going to put <laughs> them right talking. here. When we get okay. to talking, we don't always pay attention. All right, so I'm going to tell you kind of a funny story about my fabric. So Eric and I went to the fabric store and I chose some batiks that I really, really liked. Mm -hmm. You did. And they were really pretty and they were great. And then I got at home and I was like. And she called me. I said. And what did you say? I said, I'm not in love with this. And I said, I think I need different fabric. And she said, okay. So I went back to the fabric store. Yes, she did. And in my quilting head, I found what I did was found that focus fabric, this yep. beautiful floral. Yes. And then from there, I chose. Now, when I posted it on social media, many of you said, ooh, Pam, that's not really, you don't usually do that. <laughs> and I said, yes, yes, I know. Um, it's really out of my color wheel. It's not modern at all. Um, but they called you on that? I had probably a dozen people say to oh me, Oh my goodness. And we love this, but it's not really your. Color but yet. you know what? You did the same thing to me because you looked at mine and you said, Oh, I thought you would pick purple. Yeah, I did. I did. So, but as I have made my first block, I'm actually going to gift this to someone. Okay. Uh, for Mother's Day. Are you telling us who? No. I will when it's all done. Okay. Well, I was just wondering. Yeah, yeah. So think about this. So quilters, I feel like you could go to your stash and find a focus fabric. Maybe you have a couple of yards mm -hmm. of something and then kind of go from there. But here's the great thing about quilting. It's it's not set in stone. No. I mean, if you're making You can change your think, mind. Oh, I don't really love this in this particular project. Then right. Then go to your local quilt shop and find something. It's not that you don't love the fabric. No, it wasn't that I didn't. It love was the just that you didn't, you weren't seeing it in this yes. context. Yes, yes. So um, we would love to see what fabrics you have chosen. Yes. Uh, you can post them on our AQS Project Parade Facebook page. Um, you can find Eric and I are in there all the time. We post prog progress of our blocks, and we're going to take pics. And we have already seen that some of you have finished before we you even started. You little quilters, you. You did. Um, and we're excited to see that. So be sure and post them. Okay, now somebody asked, um, can you use just three colors? Because when I look at the picture, it looks like only three colors. It really is four, yeah, including your focus fabric. Okay, so let's talk about this. A fifth is the border. So if you wanted your border to pull out one of the colors you've already used, you absolutely could do that. Right, so you really do need four. Um, you need this focus fabric, and then you need some contrast here, and then a background, okay? And then I have, for mine, I actually have another floral print for the border. Now, quilters, this is going to make a fun little lap size quilt. It would be perfect. Um, but you could make more blocks if you wanted to. You could make more, bigger borders. You could do what you could make it out of a 12 inch cube instead of a 10 inch cube, but it's fine. Okay. Yes. Now, some of you asked if our block was backwards. So, this block. And I see why you would think that. Yes. Um, but actually, no. That's how it makes the X's. See, look. Yes, now stay there when you're, and um, Sonia wants to know on the quilt on the wall, which are you, we calling the focus fabric? This black, this black fabric. I need a good choice, by the way. It is lovely. It has tiny little specks of purple and gold and this tealy color. It's so really this is pretty. This the focus fabric. The white is the background, and then the purple and the teal are the accent colors. Okay, that's a great question. That is a great question. Let's see. Okay. What else do we have? How do we determine the fabric requirement for the 12 inch I knew somebody was going to ask that. I would just add some. I would add 25% more. Okay? Now, you could calculate it. Oh, okay. 
If you go to the AccuQuote website and go to a new tab called Discover, um, <laughs> you can click on that and there is a fabric requirement chart. Mm -hmm. So you could look at the pattern and determine how many of shape number, and it goes by cube. So scroll down till you find it. Don't print it out. It's like 780. Oh, yeah, pages. yeah. It's a lot of pages. I mean, it's yeah. not that many, but go to the 12-inch cube, and it will say shape number one. It will tell you how many you can cut in a yard, how many you can cut in a width. Mm -hmm. Okay? So then you could figure out your requirements for fabric based on that fabric requirement. Right. Chart. Or you could just get 25% more. There you go. And then you would have extra. And I love it. <laughs> I love the fact that somebody wants to make it out of a 12 inch cube. Can you use your focus fabric on your border? There's no quilt police. You can do whatever there's, you want to on that. I think it would be lovely on your border. Okay, so I'm gonna show you my focus or my border fabric because I brought it. Okay. Okay. Ooh. So see, here's my focus fabric. Boy, do we have so much fabric on this set. <laughs> Isn't focus it fabric. delightful? But here's my border fabric. It's like the great divide between our cutting mats, but mine was kind of encroaching here. Yes. So that's, so when you're thinking of your border, it could have, I could have certainly done a dark solid. Mm -hmm. I could have certainly chose, you know, a, a gold or a pink, but I did like this. And it was actually part of an entire collection of fabric. And that collection of fabric for mine is, I can tell you, um, it's by Moda and it's called Canoe 2. And so it kind of always in the same spot together. Right. So I could just say, oh yes, this is what I would like. Now I'm going to use this is what I'm going to use for my border. Really? Uh-huh. Okay. Because I just wanted to set it off. Yeah. And I want, I want these to really pop. So it's just a different way of looking at it. Again, I really love blenders and I love that this one has just this one really focal fabric because I really love it. It's got flowers and butterflies and it's super fun. And I just think that this is gonna let it really pop out. Now I m think I'm gonna go back in and bind it with my focus fabric. Oh, there you go. Or I could just use this and let it just kind of disappear on the edge. Okay. Or maybe I'll do a flange. You just never know. I haven't decided yet. All right, so while you're figuring it out, be sure to check out the AccuQuote blog because the lovely Erica will post each Wednesday. Did you post today? Yes. Oh, I'm just checking. If it's live, as long as it's gone <laughs> I'm live. I'm just checking. <laughs> um, today's event. Be sure to sign up. Um, go to our blogs and sign up. Yes, yes. Now, AQS will also be updating their original blog, so you can be sure and check that out as well. Okay. So should we talk about cutting the shapes for the second Oh, let's block? do. Okay. All right, so you want to pull your block out. So it's out. kind of more of the same, right? Yes. We've got more square on point. So this is, one of the reasons I love this project is that you're going to get really proficient in using a couple of the shapes that we get questions about the very most. And that's the square on point unit right here. Yes. And also the quarter square triangles in this block. And so you're really gonna get kind of proficient in that, right? Right, and let's talk about this corner section. So it's gonna have two of shape number two, mm -hmm. and then it's gonna have a total of four half square triangles. Mm -hmm. It is super important. And yes, this one is backwards. I have to flip it around. Oh, it was your block. It's my asked. block. Oh, I thought she was talking about the one up no, there. No, it's this one. This is what happens when I sew something late at night get to get Listen, ready to bring it in. Listen, we watched basketball. I, we're just saying. Yeah, we, we just watch we, we should not sew and watch basketball together. So when you make this block, you want to make sure that your um, uh, uh, focus fabric, or not your focus fabric, your accent fabric, is towards the center, and these are together. Okay. So you're also going to get used to really proficient at sewing half square triangles together, which is great. So, uh, but no Y seams which is super No, cool. I see. So we've got some questions here. Okay. Go for it. And yes, somebody did point out that that one is backwards and that's what comes of Erica sewing past later than nine o'clock at night. 
um, exactly what size shapes come in the 10 inch block. So our cube system, if you missed it earlier, we talked about how the cube system is based on a four patch. So that means a two by two or a four patch grit. So our shape number one, everything bases off of your shape number one in the cube system. Shape number one in your 10 inch cube is gonna finish to five inches because five plus five is gonna give you 10. So shape number one in your nine inch cube is gonna be four and a half inches finished. On your eight inch cube, it's gonna be four inches finished. And everything's gonna build off of that. Now Angie's asking, is there a formula on how wide I should make my border since I am using a 12 inch cube for the 18 inch finish block? And Ew. I'm going to say there might be, I am not aware of, of, of an actual, I mean, a lot of times quilters will want to make that a multiple of right. the units inside of their quilt pattern. Right. So in this pattern, and I happen to have mine handy. Oh gosh, be sure and download the pattern read. Be all sure and download it. It's gonna tell you start. to cut it at three inches so it finishes at two and a half, which is the same as our smallest unit here. So you see this half square mm -hmm. triangle unit, this is, and this square, these finish at two and a half inches. So that is how she calculated that. But that doesn't mean you have to be limited to that. It's really kind of up to you. If you are more, um, if you'd rather have a wider border, if you want it to be bigger, add a wider border. If you want to add two borders, you could do the two and a half inch finished and then a five inch finished. You know, it's really all up to you. You could also just do a five inch finished if you wanted to, but you're never gonna look out of whack if you keep to a multiple like that. So that's good information. Yes. What size is the block? So because we're using the 10 inch cube and shape number one, our, our, our mark is five inches finished. This is a nine patch or a three by three grid. So our blocks are gonna finish to 15 inches. Which is a good size Which block. Which is a good size block. Now, someone else has asked, was a little late getting here. She's asking about how to lay the fabric on the dies. Okay. So, so here's half square triangles. Yes. We measure from here to here. We add a quarter of an inch on either side of our fabric. We rough cut our strips of fabric with the fabric strips. We can cut six layers of cotton. <laughs> so I'm gonna put them right here on top. Don't worry about this tail. There's no blades inside the cutter. Only there you go. Okay. Now, if you want to know all the different size of the shapes, you can go to discover, go to discover and you can, or you can also go in, you know what? Every quilter should go in and download our free 216 block quilt brochure because it shows the 72 blocks you can make with your mix and match cube, the 72 more you can make when you add each companion, but there's also a great graph that's gonna show you what cut and finish size all your pieces inside each cube are. Yeah. And the easiest way to find that is go into your search box, type in the number 216 and it should pop up for you. You can go ahead and save that or print it out. I keep a copy of it by me at all times. I do as well, because if I'm translating a pattern, I'm like, wait a yes. minute. Yeah, it's, what am I doing it's here? just invaluable for that. It really is. Okay. Notice these little strings that I get. Quilters, do not pull your strings. Oh, somebody said I laid shape fives against shape six and it looks like shape fives are a little shorter. Is that normal? Okay, somebody's looking ahead to sewing. So let me show, <laughs> somebody's looking ahead. Let me tr tell you, you must trust. This is kind of a moment to trust in the force. Let me come over here and show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna pull out a shape. Trust the process, quilters. Trust, trust the process. And I'm gonna address this in next week's blog real extensively with pictures. And we're gonna talk about it as we sew these together. But for right now, I'm gonna show you what she's talking about, or at least what I think she's talking about. When you take, this is your shape six square. 
which is going to be a square on point. And when you lay your shape five on there, you will see teeny tiny itty bitty little peaks of your underneath fabric. You can probably barely even see it on the screen, but they are there. Do not panic. Sew your quarter inch seam, okay? Sew the opposite piece on as well. When you open these up, again, trust me, trust me, trust me. When you open these up and go to lay your next piece down, they are going to lay down perfectly and those little peaks will disappear. Yes. If it was shorter, it wouldn't work right. If it was longer, it wouldn't work right. Trust me, this is, when you look at it, you think, okay, that's not gonna work. But really, it will, I promise. I promise. You cut them like Pam and I tell you to, they're gonna finish right every single time. All right, well, Erica's cutting some fabric. Oh, do I get to cut some more? Well, if you would like to. Oh, hints. If you have material with a pattern that doesn't run with the, the straight of grain, does that mean it's not printed straight on oh, your fabric right. maybe? What um, does that mean? I don't know. Um, a, it may not be your best choice. Or B, so sometimes when you get a fabric that has a directional print or has like a stripe in it or a plaid, it's not exactly square on your fabric. So it can be kind of at an angle, and then you want to just use your lines with your fabric and, and straighten it out. And if it's a little off, I don't think it's gonna cause the world. It's gonna worry you more if your lines are crooked on your shape than if right. you cut it with the grain slightly off. So here's, here's kind of a tip we can give you. Um, okay, you own this die, right? So if you wanted to, uh, you could take painter's tape and mark it right here and lay it out right here. So when you lay your fabric, you can see where the line is extended. Yes. And then that way you can... A you Sharpie. Can, Right you on it. Yeah. Sharpie, you can use painter's tape. You can do whatever yeah, you want. Whatever you want. And then you can find what you're looking for. But oh. that's a great question. Now, you see these little bits of fabric that I have here? You know what I do with these? I do. Do you want to tell them? I get those clear. So after after Christmas clearance, when those big packs of like 24 or, or 50 of the clear plastic ornaments are on sale, I get them and then. I stuff them with, with my little fabric scraps like this and I do one for each one of my projects and then I hang them on a tree that I leave up in my sewing space all year round. I love that, I love that. Okay, we're gonna give away some, a prize today. Oh, okay, and then we probably have, we'll check back on questions yes. then. Let's do. All right, um, Erica, the, uh, I'll do it. The lucky winner of $100 in AccuQuote reward points is, drum roll please. Anne E. from Coos Bay, Oregon, which is one of our favorite places on earth. It really is. Congratulations. Listen, if you live in the Pacific Northwest and you have not been to Coos Bay, Oregon, oh, you should, you should go. go. It's Absolutely. beautiful. There. Now, go ahead. Oh, you want to do questions? or do Well, you wanna... I'm going to just do the deal and then we'll talk questions. Okay. Don't forget, we have plenty of special offers available for you on our website today. That's right. To get an order in, you would open a new tab in your browser, type in accuquilt.com slash party. You can see those current deals and place your order. Okay, now let's take a look. And one of the questions that we have does deal with our block, our um, die to try of the month. So hang on to that in your quilting head. Um, okay. Previous videos, the label on the die was facing your belly when it goes in the cutter. Yes. Does it matter? <laughs> okay. I started that and I'm gonna own it, okay? Here's <laughs> why I'm gonna tell you this. Every die has a label. If you put your label at your belly, then this becomes the lengthwise blade, okay? And then when you lay fabric on it, when you lay fabric on it, 
you're going to have your salvage, if you do with the fabric, right, you're going to lay the fabric down lengthwise green. Label it your belly lengthwise green. And I'm going to own that because it really makes a difference when you're first starting to use the AccuQuilt system. Yes. Okay? That lengthwise green, remember, it's high and tight. Look. Nice and tight. Hear it? Mm-hmm. Okay, so here's my other thing to help you remember. High and tight is right. All okay? right? Label it your belly. Your belly is high and tight. Go with it. Okay? Just go with it. So I'm going to always tell you the exception... Uh, strip dies are the exceptions to that <laughs> rule. Okay, but label it your belly lengthwise green. It's just going to help you cut correctly. I yes. was in an event years ago, um, and there was um, a quilter who came, and she had cut 400 half square triangles mm. wrong. And what happened was some of them she cut on the lengthwise green, and some of them she didn't. But she didn't know until she was trying to sew them together, and they weren't oh. right. So what she ended up doing was cutting them all again. Yes. So lengthwise green, high and tight. Label it your belly. I'm going to own it. It's mine. Okay. Now, that comes with quick. What size is the block? We talked about that. Um, any hints? Okay, we talked about that. So we had somebody who wanted to know if you could add this month's dye to try, which we were just going to conveniently talk about, the Go Kitten, which is here on our set. If you could add the Go Kitten and embroider it into the center square. And well, let's measure. Let's just measure that little kitten. He's super cute. Um, we have made so many fun things with the kitten dye. Okay. Oh, if you're, okay. And another question while you're measuring, are there names for these blocks? In the pattern, oh. you will see block one and block two is what they're called. <laughs> now, some of the units may have names, but block okay. one and block two is what you're going to see. Okay, our kitten is three and a half inches uh, wide by five inches tall. And so this is a five inch finished block. So it would come right to the top. Right to the top. But yeah. you could offset your kitten. Sure. Or you could put kittens up here. But yes, he would fit. He would come right to the top. Right to the top. His ears got, would come. That, and that's a great way to really personalize this quilt mm -hmm. is to um, pop some little appliques onto yes. it. Yes. So think about you could use the penguins. You could use flowers. You mm -hmm. could do. Um, if you did. Okay. Somebody <laughs> please do this. If you did like a farm animals like chickens and cows and stuff, you could use our farm medley dye and you could use, put the cow here and then the pig and the chicken on top of them. Yes. Please do that, somebody. Yes. Okay, so we're still having a little bit of confusion, which is great because now we're here to clear it up. So does the same apply for cutting squares as rectangles? Yes or squares as half square triangles, and does it, it matters, so what we're saying is that it matters how the fabric is on the die, but not necessarily how the die goes through the machine, and that is, that is, that is correct. How the machine, fabric is on the die while it goes through the machine. Right. Is some what matters. You, some of you have a print, right, that you want to have go a certain direction. So it doesn't matter which way the die goes through the cutter, per se. All that matters is as this die is going through the cutter, you want that lengthwise grain to go through. So if I had a rectangle and I was cutting um, a fussy cutting, okay, and that lengthwise grain, I'm going to have to manipulate it to go through the cutter. I don't care how it goes on the die. All I care is that it cuts on the lengthwise grain. Right. That's a great question. We get it a lot. Yes, we do. All right. Uh, cutting length is the same for the square. I think that catches us up with all of our questions. Okay. So here's what to do if you have more questions after the show's over, right? They've got a couple options. So one oh, is this. <laughs> that this show, well, yes, you do, because this show is recorded and you oh, can find yeah. it on. Like, what do you mean? That. I do know this. You can find it on our Facebook page. You can find it on our YouTube channel. You can find it on our website. You can also go to the blog 
and look up and read today's blog. Or you should all go ahead and join the AQS Quilting Project yes. Parade Facebook group. Yes. And this is a super, super supportive, wonderful community of quilters. There are no haters. And there are no haters on there. Post your question. Um, we've got newbies, we've got veterans. Mm -hmm. Pam and I pop on from time to time and we will be more than happy to answer your questions. Yes. But if we're not on there, maybe one of your fellow quilters is and they're gonna have an answer for you, yeah. I guarantee you. Yeah. So be sure to do that. Also, if you're just joining us and you haven't bought fabric yet, don't stress. This is a marathon, not a sprint. Right. So think about what kind of fabric, now that you've seen us cut our fabric, yes. what kind of fabrics do you think you want to get? Right. Get your fabric, get ready. Because next Wednesday, we're going to sew our pieces. It gives you a whole week to cut and get ready for the. And next week, we're going to sew block one. Yes. So really, truly, one. don't feel like you have to go ahead and sew ahead. If you oh. lay those, you know, if you've got questions and you're confused, you've got questions about quarter square triangles. You've got questions about half square triangles. Yeah. You've got questions about the square and point. That's one of the reasons why we picked this project yeah. is because quarter square triangles and square on point units are ones we get questions about all the time. Yeah. So don't feel like you gotta sew ahead. You can make a test block ahead if you want to. Yep. Grab some fabric you don't love and make a test block. Yep. But wait till next week. We'll be right here to go do it right alongside you. I promise. Okay. It's time for us to get our shoes on yes. and go get lunch and head to Columbia, Missouri. That's right. Um, where we're going to be tomorrow for Apple Tree Quilt. Then we're headed to St. Louis. There's an Arch and Jackman's Fabric. Yes. And we're going to do an event there on Friday. Saturday, we're coming back to Springfield, Missouri. And that show doesn't start until 11, that event. And yes. it's at Quilty, Quilt, Sam, Quilt, Quilt Sampler. Thank you. Quilt Sampler. Um, the reason we're not starting until 11 is because they're expecting a lot of people from Kansas City right. and they want to just come down. So if you've ever wanted to go to an AccuCult event and hang out with Eric and I, we're going to have a great time. Uh, contact those stores. Yes. And we'll let you register. Absolutely. All right. We hope that today's show is just what you needed to inspire you to cut and store your pieces for the Go Simply Cubed Quilt. And we will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. To learn more about your quilting craft, be sure to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for live events every Tuesday and Wednesday. You can check out the events page on the AccuQuilt website for more details on upcoming shows. And if you're looking for even more inspiration, visit our blog for exclusive tutorials filled with tips and tricks. And remember at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Join us every Tuesday at 12 noon central time for launch parties and trunk shows. These events are filled with tips, tricks, and inspiration. Next time, we'll be honoring the moms in your life. Tune in to see if you've won one of the door prizes that we'll give away during our show. Hey, and be sure to join me every Wednesday at 12 noon central time for AccuQuilt Live. We have tons of fun. Next week, the lovely Erica will be here. We're going to be sewing block number one for the quilt along. Hope to see you there.